fixing the fences. Now I think of it, he spent more time talking to his tractor than he did to mum. When it came to organising a hearse for his funeral, there was only one choice. At the Co-op Funeral Care, we know how important those personal touches are. With over a hundred years of experience, we'll do everything we can to help you give a loved one a fitting farewell. Co-op Funeral Care. Call or visit us online. Get a real deal from Selco Builders Warehouse on a wide range of trade quality building products. In January, get a real deal on a 2.4 by 1.2 metre sheet of 100mm extra therm pitched roof insulation for only £26.49 excluding VAT. Now that's a real deal. See even more real deals and thousands of products in stock at selcobw.com. New branches now open in Southampton and Weybridge. Selco, it's where the trade go. Tom Swarbrick, Sunday afternoons, 3 till 6, on LBC. Afternoon to you, 20 minutes past 3 the time. Tom Swarbrick with you on LBC. Yvonne's made a very good point on Twitter. She's tweeted at Tom Swarbrick1. She says, if the world is safer without Iran having nuclear weapons, it follows that it will be even safer without ours too. We're discussing whether or not your uh, attitude towards the renewal of Trident is perhaps changing slightly. I know mine certainly has. I was pretty much full square behind it. But as this debate keeps rumbling on, one wonders if there aren't other ways of trying to have a, a deterrent of that type, but without having to spend 60 to 100 billion pound uh, on the submarines in which they are carried at the moment. Uh, Peter Hitchens, whom you heard from a little earlier, has described uh, the debate as not being serious enough. We need to have a grown-up conversation, he said, about the renewal of Trident and not a conversation that just says, well, if you're not in favour of it, you're, you're clearly um, a threat to security of this country. Perhaps, actually, you think that is totally the case and that is a fair criticism. 0345 6060 973 is the number you need. You can text, of course, 84850. I've already mentioned Twitter as a way to get in touch. If you need anything for that, you need at LBC and at Tom Swarbrick1 and I'm Tom at LBC.co.uk on the email. No reason to not get in touch. Let's go to Chris first. She's in Crouch End. Hi, Chris. Oh, That's Crouch yes, End. Good <laughs> yes, good afternoon. I'll put my teeth um, in in a minute. Um, afternoon. Well, um, I don't agree with Trident. I think it's a waste of money. Look at all the people losing their jobs at the Steelworks and even today in Wales. Now, we are not a superpower, but God is a superpower and much cheaper. And if you look at the Spanish Armada, there were no Trident weapons there, but it was God who saved us, not Trident. It was, God, God acts as the first line of safety, does he? Absolutely. And how, do you know if, I mean, how does that show itself? Well, as I said, with the Spanish Armada, it was God who, who blew the winds. And, I mean, if, if this country, you, 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 you were talking early, um, later about pride. Well, I don't believe in pride, but if this country was a good country, um, making good laws, then we, A, we, people would be uh, pleased with their country, and B, no countries would be threatening us because we wouldn't be attacking and uh, bombing other countries. So uh, um, it says in the Bible, blessed are the peacemakers. So therefore, I mean, some countries don't get attacked in the, in the, mm -hmm. um, in the world because mm -hmm. they don't go around attacking other countries. Chris, thank you very much for your call. It's always good hearing from you. Let's go to Rain in Chelsea. Hi, Rain. Uh, hello, hi. Um, hi. Yeah, a couple of points. Um, one, d just taken aback by your comment about the person who said something about um, Iran and their nuclear weapons. Um, we don't have an Ayatollah commanding our strategy, so I just think that's a complete red herring. But I want to say but, that. But the point the is, the point is a fair one, isn't it? That I, I get totally that those kind of weapons in the wrong hands is made worse than in in better hands. But but the point of having them Hugely. and getting rid of them um, is clearly quite a good one if you're trying to make the world safer more generally. Well, I think so, but, um, yes, definitely. But I think there's a point that, you know, when people refer to, what was it Christopher Hitchens said, that they were vegetable-eating, um, vegetable-eating Teletubbies or something? Bearded uh, pacifists, vegetable-eating, the sandal-wearing, yeah. Okay, vegetable-eating Teletubbies, basically. So, um, you know, I... I well, this is a, and this is a man, by the way, who has at the end of his speech called for a grown-up conversation, who did refer to, to our weapons defence system, okay. our nuclear defence system, as a great big nuclear willy. Right, so that is completely nonsensical. So it doesn't make any sense, and I, I think he just completely um, destroys the whole conversation from beginning to end. And this is the reason why mainstream people do not want to get involved in politics and are apathetic about it. 
because it's that sort of Punch and Judy show. So if, if we just took that aside for a moment, then there's a measured debate about the successes of Trident mm. and the fact that we haven't had a nuclear war in so many years and who are the people controlling the buttons. And I would suggest that the main cause of war is more to do with the economic things going on. So the actual button pressing is way down the line. Yes. The well, first thing that has yeah. to be dealt with is what the politicians and the, and the businessmen are doing at the economic level. And he suggested so, too, Rain, that, that, the, uh, that New Labour got behind um, Trident for their, quote, own political convenience. Um, to what extent do you think that that is accurate? Well, I, I think it, it, it does seem to bear out in, in the terms of the whole discussion that's been had because we have people at the top of it who are completely opposed to it on any grounds. But, you know, I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly pro or not. I don't have to make the decision. I think the people mm. who are in there and who are looking at the whole thing in great detail, far greater detail than I could do in a 30-second conversation, you know, I, I mean, just in my complete amateur status, we've kept the peace somehow. Mm. I know there is bullies. You know, the only thing they're going to be threatened by are other bullies, unfortunately. And Trident is... I, I'm not kind of pro that. I'm just about the discussion, the, the level of tone to talk about it. If you want to have it grown up, then then it's it's not a, an emotional discussion to have. It's mm. a discussion to have because when and, and to think about the causes. Trident is, as I said, way 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 down the bottom. And do you yeah, think then? Not, when, and you are. I th I'm full fully behind you in saying that um, we perhaps need to think rather more differently about this discussion than just saying either you are protecting the nation or you are not um, because yes. there's got to be a lot of middle ground hasn't there to think well how yes. is this the best way of doing it in a time where as we heard from peter and to an extent from ned the threats that we faced in the uh, late 80s early 90s have pretty much gone away I don't know, with Russia and Putin, who, who knows? Mm. Well, uh, well and, and in that question lies the answer to this question, which is you have to renew it because who does know? All I look at is the Second World War and Hitler and friends of mine, you know, their, their parents said we were there in the summer and we just thought no one's going to listen to this idiot and the next thing is you're in World War Two. Mm. I, I don't know, you know, it, that kind of crazy sort of fanatical... Um, patriotism can be found incredibly quickly, especially at times of economic stress. And we are in a time of econ worldwide economic stress. And, and if the reports are to be believed, it's going to become more stressful as the year goes on. Rain, thank you very much for your call. 0345 6060 973. There is that quote that is again in uh, Mr. Hitchens article that says, when the facts change, you change your mind. Have you on Trident, the fact that it is costing so much, the fact that the threat is changing from when Trident was first brought in, does that mean that you have perhaps have had pause for thought to think, well, is it really such a threat to national security if we don't renew it in the way we have done in the past? Because it is not the, the warheads that cost the money, it is these four submarines that we have. Mohammed in Harrow. Hi, Mohammed. Hi there. So, um, thank you for having me on. No worries. Uh, my personal opinion is uh, is that there's not really any benefit as such to having uh, nuclear weapons uh, and uh, Trident as a whole as a deterrent. Um, initially, we needed it at the time during you know the Cold War and the arms race and so on. But there's really not much of a benefit anymore to have it. And if we move towards a world where we can actually get rid of all these nuclear weapons, it's much more likely that we will have a more stable world. But rather, we want to enjoy the military status of uh, holding some kind of nuclear armament. And I don't see any difference to that. I don't see how it's a genuine attempt for defense, but rather as an attempt to establish our political dominance and avoid any possible retaliations mm. uh, for some of our political interventions and military interventions around the world. So, so how fair do you think it is then that in the initial stages of a uh, discussion about Trident, a national discussion about Trident that we're going to hear a lot more about over the coming weeks and months, that it seems to be that if you are uh, against its renewal, you are threatening national security? I think it's absolutely absurd. I think, if anything, you're encouraging national security. I think the movement towards a non, you know, a not military um, dominant, you know, UK is actually a good move. We need to move uh, towards looking at some of the models in, uh, you know, Scandinavia and so on, where <laughs> we need to get beyond this kind of mentality of war and conflict and this realist conception of international politics 
where it's all about nuclear dominance and military dominance and uh, actually moving towards a more egalitarian uh, global state. And Jeremy Corbyn is doing that for you, is he? Well, <laughs> I'm never a person, a person that's partisan in any way or form, and I never attach my opinions to an institution or an individual. I never yeah. thought I should do so. That's but probably very sensible. That, <laughs> yeah, in general, I like to be critical of everyone and anyone. <laughs> you sound like a journalist, like, Mohammed. <laughs> I'm considering it also. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking that a lot of things that Corbyn have said, has said, frankly, if I'm honest, is very true to him and are his genuine attempts at creating genuine positive change. And I think, in fact, the, the majority of political analysts and so on that are very anti-Corbyn generally have some kind of vested interest as opposed to having a genuine under, you know, attempt to improve mm. national security and so on. There's much more important things to spend money on. And Trident um, is important, but again, I think it's people who hold that very specific realist international politics uh, real, real politic, real politic uh, perspective, and that's why they're pushing that agenda. Mohammed, great to talk to you. Stay cynical. Thank you for your call. Oh uh, three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. There does seem to be perhaps a little bit of truth then in this idea that Trident is used more as a political weapon than a military one. How much do you agree with that? Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. It is as Peter Hitchens said. It was New Labour's uh, own political convenience that they got behind Trident when they were in power. Do you think it is politically convenient to be behind it? Well, actually, if you judge from the press that Mr Corbyn has had when he has said that he is against renewing Trident, it would be uh, politically convenient to be ahead of it, uh, behind it, because um, he's had a lot of bad press for it, hasn't he? Do you think that is deserved? We'll come to more of your calls after a news and travel update. You're listening to Tom Swarbrick on LBC The Time, 3.31. Your news headlines come from Tim Humphrey. Tata Steel is expected to announce around a 1,000 job cuts at its plants, mostly in South Wales. It's reported the firm will reveal the details tomorrow. The majority of the positions are expected to go from its site at Port Talbot. Jeremy Corbyn has suggested the UK could keep its Trident submarines, but they don't need to be carrying nuclear warheads. The Labour leader, who's opposed to the renewal of Britain's nuclear deterrent, made the comments after launching Labour's defence review. Iran's president says a deal to lift economic sanctions against his country is a golden page in its history. Tehran has agreed to limit its nuclear program as part of the agreement. And David Bowie's life will be celebrated at a tribute concert this evening in London. Around 900 people are expected to attend Union Chapel in Islington, including friends of the singer. LBC weather, snow alerts have been issued in Strathclyde, Lincolnshire and Humberside for tonight. There may be some flurries on high ground in Wales. The western parts of England will see rain, but eastern coasts and the southeast will remain dry and there will be a sharp frost developing temperatures down to one degree from global's newsroom for lbc i'm tim humphrey this is lbc London. looking to set up a business we at barnes roof believe it's important to do it in the most tax efficient way possible this might mean setting up a qualifying company under something called the enterprise investment scheme so not only will you get tax relief on your original investment there's a good chance when you sell your business, you won't pay any tax at all. For specialist tax advice for your business, speak to Barnes Rove. Clever accountants for business. Visit barnesrove.com slash radio. Sign up for a free 14-day trial with UK Cloud Drive and get one terabyte of cloud storage backed up to data centers in the UK and EU. Military-grade encryption, easy recovery of deleted or corrupt files, and remote tracking for lost or stolen devices. Sign up at ukcloudrive.co.uk. Cancel before trial ends to avoid charges. Enlighten me. What can our customers get during Nissan's used car event from the 28th of December to the 17th of January? A 64-plate Nissan Duke from just £12,090. And? Unmissable offers on selected Nissan used car models. Well remembered. You are now at one with Nissan cared for. The January used car event. From the 28th of December to the 17th of January. Subject to availability. Price correct at 16th of December 2015. Google Nissan cared for to find your nearest dealer. Deeper understanding leads to greater peace of mind. The best place for sleepy heads is in a bridge bed in bed. At Bridge 
bedding. We have hundreds of beds and mattresses in stock from the biggest brands in the UK. We'll beat any price on a like-for-like -like basis and we'll deliver for free. So before you buy your next new bed, visit a bridge bedding centre, Rectory Grove Leon C, Upminster Road Hornchurch or online at bridgebedding.com. The best place for sleepyheads is in the bridge bedding bed. What would make an amazing 2016? Ah, oh, lazing in the sun and luxury shopping in Dubai. Boutiques, bars and tasty tapas in Barcelona. Or big nights and romantic days in Edinburgh. Planning a year of adventures is easy and so is affording it with Hilton's Big Sale. Any weekend, any adventure. Make it yours with rooms from just £59. Book now at hilton.com forward slash sale. Booking conditions apply. Stays to be taken by 30th of December. Why just learn a new language when you can live one? With Linguistica 360, you can quickly advance your language skills in the context of current events. News in slow Spanish, news in slow French, and news in slow Italian are a series of weekly programs that let you hear the news at a slower pace, so you can understand almost every word. In fact, if you had to do anything fast, we'd suggest this. Subscribe to News in Slow Spanish, Italian, or French today. Available at newsinslow.com. This is LBC, leading Britain's conversation with Tom Swarbrick. Afternoon, 25 to 4. The time Gary has texted from Horsham. Hi, Gary. He says, Tom, to replace the submarines without fitting the nukes is beyond ludicrous. Even by the standards of Jeremy Corbyn, it's like building hundreds of hospitals purely to employ the builders, but put no medical equipment inside them. The man, says Gary, is truly a clown. It does seem a strange suggestion, I have to say, to keep the Vanguard class of submarines, that uh, the four of them that are on standby at any point to deliver this uh, nuclear payload, should it be required, without then putting the, the warhead in them. Uh, why on earth would you need the submarine if uh, able to carry the, these kinds of weapons if you then didn't apply the weapon? Uh, that does seem rather strange. What seems, uh, what might be less strange though, is the idea that you might think that the renewal of Trident in its current form isn't a great idea. Has your view of Trident changed at all over the last few months that we have been hearing uh, this debate rage within, particularly within the Labour Party? 0345 6060 973. Or is anybody who says that we do n we should not renew Trident at all, uh, are they putting the security of the country at risk? Terry is in Greenwich. Hi, Terry. Yes, hello there. Um, I think history teaches us that we must never let our guard down. Um, Charles II ran the army down uh, and the fleet, and uh, consequently the Dutch sailed up the Thames and sacked our ships in Chatham. Uh, in the Second World War, we were woefully behind, and we just by the skin of our teeth managed to get our forces in shape but I think it was a very narrow close shave um, so to my mind we, we, we should leave things as they are um, we have to remember that Russia, China North Korea, France India, Pakistan America and possibly others that we don't know about have the nuclear weapons and um, for us to be at the bottom of the pile, uh, you know, kind of goody-goody boys. I just don't see it. We've got to keep our security t uh, top priority. That's my view. So, Thanks. so you can you can have all the um, all the, the the ideals that you like, but when it comes down to brass tacks, you need to have the warheads there on standby just in case. Absolutely. And is there I any truck so. in the argument, Terry, that says that if you look at um, in terms of people keeping our security safe, uh, that the Conservative government have cut to the armed forces? to, I think it stands at 80,000 now. They can fit inside Wembley Stadium. How safe does that make you feel? Well, it's going back to Charles II, isn't it? <laughs> it's returning to Charles II, who also cut the forces back. So um, I think their policy is most misguided. Terry, thank you very much for your call. Annie is in Lancashire. Hi, Annie. Hi. Um, well, I'd just like to say, um, A, I think it's a colossal waste of money. Um, but... I, I think I'd feel, I feel more um, or less secure having them because, you know, there, nobody sort of mentioned anything like accidents happening. I mean, there have been times over the last 40 years that, you know, the Americans have been, you know, on high alert and everything, thinking there were, um, you know, weapons flying in towards them. And they've turned out to be, you know, f uh, flights of birds and things. And, you know, human beings make mistakes. Mm. Um, you know, technology isn't infallible and things go wrong with it. I mean, I, and also there's things like, 
terrorism. I mean, you know, you don't want terrorists, terrorists getting their hands on, you know, nuclear weapons. Well, uh, well Jeremy Corbyn has said again today that the the, the deterrent that the, uh, the nuclear threat poses um, didn't it wasn't a de de deterrent for 9/11 or for 7/7. It didn't prevent people from doing those kind of acts. No, well, the Falklands, even you know, which was a proper war in inverted commas, if you want to call yeah. it that, really, although albeit a small one and thousands of miles away. But you know, <laughs> the fact that we had nuclear weapons didn't deter them from invading the Falklands. I mean, mm. I just can't see the point of having them. I think they're just a huge sort of. Um, I don't know, viri viri virility symbol, because we just cannot get over... What is it with people coming on the radio and talking about tridents like they're talking about their genitals? Uh, Annie, stay there. Oh, I want God. to I want to bring oh. Peter in. I want to bring Peter, who's in Hoban, in. Hi, Peter. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it seems to me the world in many ways is actually more dangerous than it was during the Cold War. I mean, it's Pakistan, India, have nuclear weapons, China's become more belligerent. Russia has basically invaded Ukraine, although there were guarantees when Ukraine gave it up to nuclear weapons and Georgia. Israel still holds nuclear weapons. Uh, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, there were stories of nuclear facilities having one rusty padlock on it, so terrorists could have got in there and got nuclear weapons and so on and so forth. So for me, it's more of an open question. Um, do you I, think I, then, Peter, I'll bring in Annie in a second, do you yes. think then that anybody who suggests that there might be another way, there might be a way of perhaps saving some money in renewing this, is always going to be wrong? Right now, I think they're probably mistaken, but the situation is also changing. You know, they're bringing in all these micro-subs that are going to be able to follow the main yes. subs, and so... It, very possibly, they think within 15 years, Trident will be outdated anyway. So my my instinct will be to run Trident on and not renew it, but just run it on until it probably comes outdated in 10, 15 years' time. It is true that there's been three occasions when we almost went to nuclear war. There's only one which is really known, but it's Cuba. And it is a terrible, terrible risk. At the same time, when other people have them all across the world and unstable people have them and people are very belligerent have them, it's... It's very questionable whether you should give them up, you know? Let, let me bring in Annie then. Annie, respond okay. to what you've heard from Peter. Well, I mean, I can't see that any of those countries that have got them at the moment, and there's only very few, I mean, most of the world managed to live perfectly, you know, in complete safety without them. But, I mean, the only the reason we had them was because of Russia, and Russia has absolutely no interest in us now. I mean, yes, they do have an interest in countries... Not least because they can't them. afford it. I mean, they just can't afford to, to wage a major campaign like that if you look at um, what's happening to their economy. No, I'm sure they can't, but they've no interest anyway. They're interested in the countries that are around about them that they still see as their sphere of influence, like Ukraine and Georgia and those kind of countries. They're not interested in the UK. In fact, there was a Russian minister who, a couple of years ago, called um, Britain a significant little island that nobody takes any notice of, which is just about true. You know, you know, wake up, Cameron. We're, you know, we're not a big power anymore. Nobody okay. cares about us. Annie, thank you. Peter, you need to wake up. I think the closest person and power to Hitler since the Second World War is Putin. There are many, many differences, but there are many, many similarities. Uh, by the way, in... Uh, That's a the big West, statement, that, Peter. <laughs> That's a why, big call. Why, but I think it's true, because they have a real power. It's not like Saddam, they have a small power. You know, and if you read much about what's happening in Russia now, it's, it's quite terrifying, to be honest with you. But uh, according to why the West uh, rules for now, the last time they had a nuclear test, actually their nukes didn't go off. So, it's, but it's not just Russia, it's all the well, all what, coherent, all the other threats that are around it. One know? is reminded too, Peter, of the testing that North Korea did. Was it last week or the week before of their A or H bomb that they managed to test, apparently, according to reports from there? It does seem that they are arming themselves rather more quickly uh, than people might have thought. Peter, thank you for your call. 0345 6060 973. Is it always the case that people who say maybe we need to look at, uh, in another way at, at Trident are threatening our national security? Uh, lots of you getting involved on 84850. Uh, Tom, whilst being neutral on the Trident question, what would Mr. Corbyn do about all the redundant workers who would otherwise be employed renewing the submarines? asks Kate. And Mr. Corbyn has been on today to say that securing jobs is a priority, and that is 
presumably why he came up with this idea to keep the subs but not the the nukes which is a very strange way i i think of, of saving people's jobs uh terry's in hackney hi terry oh hi um there's nothing uh the, the, the man who we just finished with i don't know what he's talking about if india should keep uh, the neutral bomb why should lose our own it's for security they're talking about america uh, that uh, he could not stop them bombing america if america see the bomb see the terrorist, terrorists coming they will use whatever they have to defend it so it shouldn't happen so that is out of it so uh, the government knows what to do to keep the security of this country safe let them do that and there's no way that that, that should change at all there's no way that perhaps we should find another way of doing it cheaper we should just keep renewing the same uh, the same system we've had in place since the 80s. I mean, he's been there before any of them come up in power, and he's been protecting. Knowing that we have it there, they couldn't even try anything. So I don't know why they should st destroy it now, and they destroy it to, uh, this year, and something happened next, last, next year. What would they say? They say? Oh, they shouldn't have done that. That is scrap. I don't, I don't buy the idea. Well, Ter you, Terry, hang on a second, hang on a second, sir. I would just remind you of your language, please. I think I think that's going to be a yellow card. Uh, it is a family show. Terry, thank you for your call. 0345 6060 973, the number to you, for you to get in touch with the programme on. Uh, we'll take more of your calls after a travel update and we'll head over to what is uh, a looking like a secret David Bowie memorial gig that's taking place in North London in the next 15 minutes with a major star that is apparently turning up to play to only a handful of people uh, in this special gig. We will speak to the organiser of that uh, after the update. You're listening to Tom Swarbrick on LBC. The time, 3.45. From the LBC Travel Centre, I'm Mark Underhill. In the centre of town, there are keys on the Euston Road and the A501 westbound from St Pancras Station towards Great Portland Street Tube Station. That's a queue of over a mile because it's down to one lane for water main repairs. And Childs Hill, an accident has blocked a Finchley Road coming towards town at Cricklewood Lane. In Putney, the A205 Upper Richmond Road is still closed in both directions be be between Putney High Street and East Putney Tube Station because of a large crane working there, so it's especially busy on the A3 West Hill as traffic dies. Diverts. There are some short delays at the southbound Blackhall Tunnel following a crash earlier. In Charlton, Shooters Hill Road is shut between Charlton Park Lane and Corelli Road because of a serious accident. And on the tube is the Piccadilly Line. Well, that's not running between Acton Town and Uxbridge and Cock Fosters to Arnest Grove with severe delays elsewhere because of a shortage of drivers. Keeping London moving. Your next update's in 15 minutes. This is LBC. <laughs> There's only one place you'll hear bar staff offering over 50 varieties of vodka martini because when it comes to exemplary service, only one cruise line has raised the bar this high. There's no extra mile we won't go, from reserving a heated lounger in our eucalyptus steam rooms to Eggs Benedict at three in the morning. Who are we? Keep listening. You might just hear. So what does a good teacher make? My teacher makes me want to put on my hand up as fast as I can in class. My teacher makes me believe that I can be the best I really can. My teacher just made me realise that not all subjects are bad. <laughs> Make a difference to thousands of lives, including your own. Tax-free bursaries are available to help you while you train. Teaching. Your future. Their future. Search Change to Teaching. Bursaries subject to eligibility. We are Celebrity Cruises and Modern Luxury lives here. Book before February the 29th and you'll only pay half for your companion on selected European sailings and staterooms. Visit celebritycruises.co.uk or contact your travel agent for more details. Cruise Critic Awarded. Abder and Adult Protected. Justatrader.com Has your fence fallen down? Don't fix it. Leave it on the ground. Stick a couple of chairs on it. Your neighbours will think you've splashed out on decking. Or head to trustatrader.com, put your postcode in and find approved qualified tradespeople to do the job for you. Whatever job you want doing, spot on. Reviewed, reputable, right good tradespeople. Visit trustatrader.com. 
Winter Sale is now on at 269 Ballard's Lane, home of the Curtain Factory Outlet. And there's 20% off everything. So it's not just Black Friday, there's Blue Saturday, Green Wednesday, Pink Thursday, and more. In fact, with 10,000 rolls of designer curtain and upholstery fabric in stock, every day can be full of colour for 20% less. Find the perfect designer fabric in the Winter Sale, now on at the Curtain Factory Outlet. Open seven days a week at 269 Ballard's Lane, North Finchley. CurtainFactoryOutlet.co.uk Tom Swarbrick, Sunday afternoons, 3 till 6, on LBC. Afternoon, after 4 o'clock, we're going to be asking why it is that you don't like Britain anymore. There is a survey uh, that has come out which has been looking at national attitudes towards this country. It's been doing it over a 10-year period, from 2003 to 2013, and it has concluded that uh, pride in this country has fallen by a third. I want to know, after 4 o'clock, why you think that is. Uh, we're talking, of course, at, in this hour about Trident, its renewal, uh, as we speak about the UK's discussion about that. Uh, the President Obama is on his feet in the States. He is talking about the Iran nuclear deal that has been struck, uh, which has lifted sanctions on that country and also seen an exchange of prisoners as well back to the US. The President on his feet now. Let's just have a listen to what he's saying. Partners reached with Iran last year. Iran will not get its hands on a nuclear bomb. The region, the United States and the world will be more secure. As I've said many times, the nuclear deal was never intended to resolve all of our differences with Iran, but still, engaging directly with the Iranian government on a sustained basis for the first time in decades has created a unique opportunity, a window, to try to resolve important issues. And today I can report progress on a number of fronts. First, yesterday marked a milestone in preventing Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. President Obama is speaking now. live in Washington. We will be getting more on what he has had to say and what um, Ayatollah Khomeini has been having to say uh, in Iran uh, from our U.S. correspondent Simon Marks uh, in about an hour or so. A historic deal that was done a few months ago. We are seeing uh, it played out now as well. President Obama saying the world more secure by Iran not having nuclear weapons. I wonder whether or not you think uh, Britain would be more secure by not having them too. Dinesh is in Oxford. Hi, Dinesh. <laughs> Um, uh, in my mind, the nuclear terrorist is actually protecting... Dinesh, we'll try again because I think your line from Oxford is deteriorating somewhat. I don't know whether it might be the snow that's hanging on some of the lines there. We'll try again. Tony's in Enfield. Hi, Tony. Hello there. Yes, I would I would abandon the whole of the Trident nuclear missile systems. It's not a... Look, over 190 countries are non-nuclear. They don't have nuclear bombs. Canada, New Zealand, and I think this is absolute nonsense when they talk about tens of thousands of people will be out of a job. Fine, give them a million pound each. That will save us about 250 billion pounds. And mm. after the nuclear um, October 1962, the Cuban crisis, let's be reminded, the Cubans beat the attack by the United States in 72 hours. And what pushed them into that Russian camp was the United States threatening all that invasion on Cuba. It wasn't Cuba is going to invade the United States and there's a big trade-off. They got all the nuclear bombs and rockets out of Turkey that were threatening the Soviet Union. Look, the Brits love a war. We've loved a war for hundreds of years. You know, we should wake up, smell the coffee, get rid of nuke. We even got the, the, the code. If we wanted to use our nuclear weapons, we have to get permission from the United States. Well, it's absolute... uh, not, that's Sorry. not quite uh, that, that's not quite true. We don't necessarily have to get permission from the United States in the event of an attack on Britain. Well, that's, uh, that's, that, that's rather odd because politicians on this very program have said over the years that we, ne we don't have the code if we wanted to uh, um, act out one of our nuclear weapons on a country. We need permission from the United States. We don't have the code for them. But anyway, who's going to invade the Uni United Kingdom? You tell me, is Holland, your pre one of your previous callers talked about two, 300 years ago when we reduced our military and we were attacked by, by the Dutch. What a load of rubbish. Tony, thank you very much for your call. Strong views as always. 0345 6060 973. We'll come back to your calls on that in just a moment. Seven minutes to four is the time. I mentioned it a little before the travel news there that David Bowie's life is going to be celebrated tonight at a tribute concert a week on uh, from the musical Pioneer's death after a very private fight uh, against 
cancer. Let's speak to one of the organisers uh, of this event. Uh, Neil Lindsay is from uh, Bowie Secret Tribute Party. Afternoon, Neil. Afternoon, Tom. Hi. Hi. Are we allowed even to say where this event is taking place? Is it that secret? Um, it's, it's not that secret. I can tell you where it's going to be taking place, but it's a sold-out gig, so there's not a lot of points ah. for anybody trying to turn up and get it. It's at the Union Chapel in Islington, Highbury. How many people are going to be there? Um, well, it's going to be a capacity crowd, which makes it over 900 people. Um, and tickets sold out within about three hours when they went on sale earlier in the week. And why, su why the secrecy around it? Uh, well, uh, as you can imagine, organising uh, uh, an event like this with um, uh, literally a few days' notice, um, we have been getting people to sign on the dotted line right up um, right. until the last minute. So some of our guests have only committed to coming this morning. So I gather that um, the three pews have been reserved for, for friends and collaborators of the Ashes to Ashes singer. Um, can you tell us who's playing? Um, I, I'm, I can't oh, uh, Neil. tell you that yet. Uh, Come on, I man, give us a clue. Well, um, plenty of plenty of big names. Um, <laughs> there may be somebody who played uh, with uh, the Sex Pistols might be on stage. Ooh. Nice. Um, uh, I can show you a bit of leg, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, uh, saw a bit of ankle there, uh, Neil. <laughs> um, uh, possibly somebody linked with Pink Floyd. Um, and I, we'll is there is there any way is there party. any way we can see this if we've not got tickets? Is it being streamed? Is it being shown online? Uh, uh, yes, it will be streamed. Uh -huh. um, it will be streamed. You should be able to look at, uh, get it uh, on YouTube. If you go to uh, our Twitter page, there will be details about that. That's um, uh, at Bowie underscore tribute. At Bowie uh, underscore tribute. And there is also. Uh, there's also links there to the Facebook page where I'm led to understand um, you will be able to get the link to the live streaming. And finally, Neil, it starts in, what, about five minutes? Uh, there's a large queue of people waiting to be let in. Doors open uh, in, about, in about ten minutes and the first act is on at 5 p.m. We better get run until about nine. We better let you get cracking then, Neil. Thank you so much for joining us, Neil Lindsay, one of the organisers of that secret tribute tribute uh, uh, organisation or concert uh, to mark the life of David Bowie, of course, who sadly died at the age of 69. Sounds like it's going to be a good one if you manage to get tickets. Well done. Uh, we try to get uh, speak to Dinesh, who is in Oxford. Let's try again because his line fell apart. Hi, Dinesh. Hi, Don. Thanks for getting me back on. No problem. What would you like to say? And, uh, I uh, just before I forget, uh, I, I quite enjoy your uh, live presentation during the weekdays. And, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> Thank you. Quite lively, uh, lively live presentation, I should say. Light. Um, okay. Dinesh, carry on. Uh, on the topic of um, Pride, I, I think in my, in my mind, it could be heard this a nuclear deterrent while it's happening, a nuclear attack while it's happening. So you're actually protecting our citizens rather mm. than going attacking and punishing our citizens of a country who may or may not have been participating in the decision. So, uh, for example, North Korea taxes. Are the citizens to blame or is the leader to blame? Mm. I think we should be investing more in missile protection like Israel's Iron Dome or something similar. And even in nowadays, you, you don't really expect a missile like ISIS who are quite spread out. What if they do a dirty bomb attack? And things like, you know, cutting your fire force or ambulance services and the police mm. is not going to help in circumstances. You actually need... Well, well one, would, one might make the argument, Dinesh, that you are better off trying to defeat a threat like ISIL by, by spending more on our armed forces in ways in which they can use their, their military hardware or whatever it is, capability to defeat ISIL in Syria and Iraq, rather than spending all this money on, on something that you, you literally cannot use against them. That's true, and absolutely, and the, the other part is the, the ice is quite split up. We don't know if they are actually geographically tied down. You, they, could, they could be present in the UK. The thing is, how do we counterbalance an attack when it's happening or happened? That's mm. the key thing. And, and cutting our, our emergency response teams or cutting resources is not, is not going to help. And putting showcase technology like Trident, who is actually a US product and it's not even built by the British, Dinesh, great call. Glad we got you back on. Um, thank you very much for your kind words as well. Uh, Kevin is in South Oxford. Hi, Kevin. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Yeah, I, I think it's imperative that we have um, tried and, and continue to um, upgrade it because, um, you know, when they, we, our armed forces are diminishing in manpower. If you look at China, they're building 
some of the biggest aircraft carriers known to mankind never existed, a dwarf anything from the states have got. If you look to their show of strength a few months ago, there was only one state leader that attended that show of strength was Putin. Um, unfortunately, in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, history as terrible as it was, it brought an end to atrocities globally. Um, and I think, you know, we, we have to... So the means justifies the ends there? Well, the First World War was always going to be the, the world that ended, you know, the war, the war that ended the wars. It didn't happen. We don't know what the future holds. You know, there's a lot of countries out there. We don't know, you know, what's going to happen. Without a deterrent, I mean, the, you know, four million in, in, in the Chinese services, four million. They can come, come across the world like a swarm of ants. I mean, you know... But they're not all, going to, Kevin, are they? I mean, there's no, no appetite well, you, well, for well, that. Do you know what? Did we know the Hitler? Did, did we know that it would take the world almost six years to beat Adolf Hitler? Kevin? Thank you very much indeed for your call. Thank you for all your calls in that hour. Final text. The solution to the Trident question is blindingly obvious. Don't renew it, but say that we have renewed it, thereby have the deterrent and the money, says James in Barnes. The ultimate bluff. Uh, we move on. Coming up, how does this make you feel? Does it make you feel proud, patriotic or nauseous? To be thankful for the people who bring love and happiness into our own lives and to look for ways of spreading that love to others. We shall defend our island, whatever the government Maybe. It's great to be wearing it. It's a privilege. National pride has fallen by a third over the last decade, particularly among the younger generation. What's wrong with Britain? Why do you not feel pride in our institutions, in our people, in our way of life? And why do you think there is a generational divide in feeling pride in this country? 0345 6060 973. online, on your mobile, and on digital radio. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at four o'clock, Tata Steel is expected to announce around a thousand job cuts at its plants, mostly in South Wales. It's reported the firm will reveal the details tomorrow. The majority of the positions are expected to go from its site at Port Talbot. The steel industry has shed thousands of jobs over the last year because of high costs and cheap imports. Stephen Kinnock is the Labour MP for Aberavon and says the government should have stepped in long ago. I'm afraid we're getting a lot of warm words and excuses from the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills. We're not getting enough tangible action and we're also getting things coming far too late. This steel crisis has been brewing for not months but years and I'm afraid that the government has been asleep at the wheel. Jeremy Corbyn has suggested the UK could keep its Trident submarines, but without them carrying nuclear warheads. The Labour leader, who is opposed to the renewal of Britain's nuclear deterrent, made the comments after launching Labour's defence review. Mail on Sunday columnist Peter Hitchin supported the nuclear deterrent in the Cold War, but told LBC it isn't needed anymore. Our conventional defences, which are actually usable and on which we truly rely, are being eviscerated by spending cuts and by the running down of, uh, of both equipment and manpower power so that they're increasingly useless while huge quantities of money are being spent on and reserved for the renewal of this colossal pointless toy. Iranians are celebrating after crippling economic sanctions on the country were lifted. The decision was made because the UN watchdog is happy that Tehran has scaled back its nuclear program. A group of pro-European conservatives is warning a vote for the UK to leave the European Union would be a jump into a void. A new alliance of MPs has been set up by former Minister Nick Herbert, who led the campaign to keep Britain out of the Euro 15 years ago. The life of David Bowie is to be celebrated at a tribute concert in London. Around 900 people will be there including friends of the singer. Organisers say this evening's lineup is a closely guarded secret, although more than 20 performers are expected to appear. LBC's Eliza Phillips is there. The doors have just opened at London's Union Chapel in Islington. The performance starts with a mass karaoke sing-along of Starman. I asked these fans what the man meant to them. He's just one of the main biggest icons of pop and he's he just seen me through my much of my life. Put me in mind of when Elvis passed and John Lennon and it's floored me for the rest of the day. And I'm here with my three daughters, who are all fans. They're between the ages of 11 and 23. So I think he's crosses generations. The tickets were sold at just four pounds, but all profits will go to help others suffering with cancer. Eliza Phillips, LBC, Islington. 
and LBC weather. Snow alerts have been issued for Strathclyde, Lincolnshire and Humberside for tonight. There may be some flurries on high ground in Wales. The western parts of England will see rain, but eastern coasts and the southeast should remain dry and a sharp frost will develop. Temperatures down to one degree. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Tim Humphrey. From the LBC Travel Centre, I'm Mark Underhill. In the centre of town, the A501 is queuing westbound, heading out of town from St Pancras Station towards Great Portland Street Tube. It's where it's down to one lane for some water main repairs. But in Charles Hill, Finchley Road is now back open at Cricklewood Lane after a crash earlier on. In Putney, the A205 Upper Richmond Road, well, that's still closed both ways between Putney High Street and East Putney Tube Station because of a large crane working there. So it's a bit busy on the A3 West Hill as traffic diverts around that, so some short delays in the surrounding area. Uh, there are some short delays at the southbound Blackwall Tunnel after a much earlier crash. You can be stuck there for five or ten minutes. But in Charlton, Tudors Hill Road is now back open after a crash earlier on. Now the Piccadilly line, that's still not running between Acton Town and Uxbridge and Cop Fosters to Arnest Grove with severe delays elsewhere because of a shortage of drivers. Keeping London moving, next updates in 15 minutes. Running your own business, wasting hours at evenings and weekends sorting out invoices and paperwork. With invoice to go you can send invoices in under two minutes on your phone tablet or computer you can invoice customers on the spot before you even leave the job site piece of cake try invoice to go today and get a free 14-day trial and get an annual plan for half price from only eight pounds for the first year by quoting code london find us in the app store or at invoice to go.com today invoice limits apply this is lbc leading britain's conversation Tom Swarbrick. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Tom Swarbrick. Sunday afternoons 3 till 6 on LBC. Five past four the time. Afternoon. Great to have your company. Tom Swarbrick here with you on LBC. Another freezing night is on the cards tonight. Temperatures down to minus 10 in some places. Charities now warning that there is a serious threat to life to those sleeping rough. In an hour, we'll hear from one man who has spent 10 years homeless. People are dying out here every winter. Really? Because it is too hard for them. We'll ask what more can be done to stop the rise of homelessness. First, though, in perhaps not particularly unrelated discussion, why do you think it is that pride in Britain has fallen by over a third in the last decade? Why do you not like Britain? A lot of you would have woken up with uh, snow on the ground this morning. I drove to Hillingdon, uh, albeit to catch a train that wasn't running, but nevertheless, I drove up through some absolutely beautiful countryside. There was snow on the hills. I walked through the centre of one of the greatest cities on earth. The theatres were open, the shops were buzzing, there were families knocking about. It was brilliant. What's not to like? What is it about this country then, this great island with its history and its culture and its industries and its institutions that doesn't make you feel proud? The British Social Attitudes Survey, the longest running, the perhaps the most authoritative uh, barometer uh, of public opinion of its kind, has reported back to say that British national pl pride is quietly fading. The survey looked at attitudes from 2003 to, to 2013 and it found this. In 2003, 43% of you said you were very proud of your nationality, 39% of you saying somewhat proud. Now, only 35% express strong pride and 47% said they were somewhat what proud the upshot is the survey says that those expressing a strong national pride fell by almost a third why 0345 6060 973 has your pride in britain dropped is it waning interestingly i think the figures point to what is um, they say a subtle generational shift only 20 percent of those in their 20s felt very proud compared to 66% of over 75s. Why do you think that is? Is that because Britain is a worse place for younger people than it is for those of you who are over 75? I get, I, you know, I understand that every country has its problems and its difficulties, but I do think you have to be 
it's sensationally cynical and curmudgeonly to think that this isn't one of the greatest countries on earth. We, you know, tolerant, polite, uh, united, a country of, of pubs and, and cricket pitches where people say thank you on motorways when you let them in the lane by doing that thing with their indicators where they flash them one way and flash them the other, the other way. You just don't get that anywhere else, do you? Have you fallen out of love with the UK? If so, why? And why is it that the younger generation seem to love the country less than the older generation. 0345 6060 973. Eight minutes past four the time. A little earlier I spoke to Andrew Rossendale, who is Conservative MP for Romford, who uh, you may remember some time ago offered to teach Mr Corbyn the words to the national anthem and has also campaigned to promote patriotism. I asked him what he made of the findings. Well, it's inevitable that if schools don't teach the history of our country, if our traditions are not upheld in the way that they have done in previous years, it's inevitable that young people don't know about them and don't appreciate them in the way that previous generations have done. I think it's terribly dangerous that we've allowed that to happen. But we have had years and years of political correctness dumbing all this down, and we're going to pay a price for that, which is why I want our government to reverse that trend and to be quite public about the love of country, the belief in our great traditions, and everything that makes us proud to be British. In what way has political correctness um, stopped people from feeling that patriotism? Well, one thing uh, you can say straight away is the years and years when it wasn't really possible to fly the Union Jack without being accused of being somehow far right wing, which was always untrue. There are people of all political persuasions who love their country and are patriotic. It's things like the BBC dumping the national anthem from the close of play at the end of the day and refusing to restore it. It's all these sort of things over a number of years um, sort of shields new generations from uh, a passionate love of country and it tends to now be sport that brings people together but actually we've got a lot to say about Britain which is good which is beyond just talking about success in sporting events. So so a lack of hearing the national anthem uh, on regular occasions and not being able to fly the flag means that people aren't proud of the achievements of this country? Not at all. I, I didn't say that at all. I think that it's you, gave, you asked me to give examples. I give mm. examples of how political correctness has taken over from common sense. Just look what they do in America. Look what they're doing in France. Look at what they do in even countries, small countries like Switzerland. Wherever you go, you see a pride in country. They sing the national anthem in schools. In America, in Switzerland, mm. you see their flag flying. You'd never have a situation uh, in those countries where you wouldn't celebrate your national day, for instance. We don't even have a national day. They won't even allow St. George's Day to be a celebration for England. So there's so many examples of this, but it's also about teaching British history and the success of our country and being the country that has fought for democracy, freedom, the rule of law, free speech, tolerance, freedom of religion around the world. Other countries uh, have tried to do that but failed. We did it. We sailed the world and promoted these British values and countries far and wide have adopted our traditions and respect the way Britain has evolved over many centuries. It only seems here in Britain that we've had a class of people that have wanted to hide that away and pretend that we aren't who we are, which is something we should be really deeply proud of. And it's interesting from this survey that it does point to the younger generation as losing uh, a sense of pride in this country. And you talk about education. To what extent do you think that people rather take it for granted, the achievements of what this country has done, particularly in terms of fighting for freedom and for democracy, which of course an older generation did actually have to do? Well, I think you've made an absolutely superb point, and I think that's the crux of it. If younger generation don't understand how we have the successful country we've got, if they don't know how we've achieved it, because they don't understand the history, they don't realize the sacrifices that our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents and our forebears have fought so hard to achieve and spilled blood to achieve it, if they don't understand that, if they just take it all for granted and think, well, we've got everything, let's we don't need to defend it. Every generation needs to cherish what we've got to defend it, to enhance it, 
and to secure it for the next generation. And that's why this European referendum is really important to decide what we are as a nation. And that's something that the uh, younger people in our country today have got to make their minds up on because that's going to affect how we develop as well. Andrew Rossendale, Conservative MP for Romford. Over to you, 0345 6060 973. Why do you think people have apparently lost pride in Britain? Or do you think actually you need to st stand and say that this country has done incredible things, it has achieved greatness? If you look at what happened even just this last week, we had a British astronaut for the very first time on a spacewalk wearing the Union Jack on his sleeve. That is a colossal achievement that should be celebrated, shouldn't it? Why do you think pride in Britain has slipped? Andrew's in Fulham and going to kick us off. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, if you know, Britain has changed beyond recognition. Uh, the old things about going into a local corner shop and finding someone that actually speaks English. Going into different townships and small, small villages and finding that very, very few people even speak English. Uh, people coming into this country where, where uh, we now are adapting to other people's cultures as opposed to when, uh, when our, our family came over, we had to adapt to British culture. Having Christmas being demonized and, uh, oh, and Andrew, uh, being, being banned. Andrew, come on! But it's not. But it's not the. It's not the picture that you are painting that is happening. It's not that Christmas is being of, banned. Of man. course, uh, of course it is. When was oh that, uh, no, it's not. I, See, I, this is when, now. When I, was, uh, when I was, hold on a second. Hold on a second. When I was brought up, when I was uh, uh, brought up, and I'm Jewish, by the way. Uh, when I was brought up, everyone celebrated Christmas. Now you look at the holidays and they call them holidays. No, Andrew, and that might be the case in maybe, I think it, the Daily Mail did this story, it might have been two schools that did that. It is not the case that in the whole of this country, in the majority, uh, even uh, even with a, uh, you couldn't even call it a small minority of places that do this. It is not even worth bothering ourselves with uh, that some people choose to not call it Christmas and call it the holiday season because in the vast majority of this country, it's Christmas. Andrew, thank you for your call. Jamie's in Manor Park. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, hi, Tom. Uh, this is a very interesting subject. Uh, that Conservative MP you just mm. just, just had on, uh, it really riled me. The I did. hypocrisy of it. Uh, the reason why pride has gone down in this country is because this country no longer supports its citizens. Uh, all those people that died in the Second World War fighting for freedom also fought for equality. Things like uh, polytechnics, uh, colleges, the NHS, cancel flats, cancel housing for everybody, decent housing. All these things over the past 10, 15, 20 years have been taken to pieces. You want to go to university, you've got to get a massive loan. Uh, council housing, forget about it. You've got to go to the uh, private landlords who are charging extreme money. You know, uh, and, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's strange that the young have absolutely no pride in their country now because they're the ones that are really getting it. So uh, I can totally understand. So, and, and you lay that squarely at the at the um, door of politicians of different hues because, of course, this survey has spanned two different governments. Um, you lay it at their feet. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's Blair as well as Cameron. And that's all part of this massive privatisation, uh, you know, the, the whole neoliberal agenda uh, to, to basically take things out of the public hands and to privatise it. And all those people, you know, my granddad was in the D-Day landings, you know, he got half, half, half his legs blown off and they were fighting for equality, they were fighting for a new chance, a new deal, as it was called. And they got that deal, they got the universities, they got the decent housing. It's all been taken away from us now. Jamie, thank you. 0345 6060 973, are we just going to hear an hour of, albeit not, um, not totally unfair cynicism and uh, and problems that are still in existence in this country or is someone going to come on and say actually there are a lot of good things that this country does and we should be proud a lot more of a lot more of it than really we are led to believe 0345 6060 973 you're listening to Tom Swarbrick on LBC the time is 416
From the LBC Travel Centre, I'm Mark Underhill. One well, in the West End because of the final day of the London Lumiere Festival, Piccadilly, Oxford Street and Regent Street will be closed into traffic again in a few minutes. We'll stay closed to, to about half past 11. So there'll be lots of changes and diversions to all the buses in central London as well. In Putney, the A205 Upper Richmond Road is closed both ways between the High Street and East Putney Tube Station because of a large crane that's working there. So the road will stay shut for about another hour or so. So it's quite busy on the A3 West Hill as traffic diverts with delays of about 10 minutes. In the centre of town, the A501, that's now moving well between St Pancras Station and Great Portland Street Tube. They've finished the roadwork, so it's all running fine. In Charlton, Shooters Hill Road has reopened after a serious crash, but the Piccadilly line is still suspended between Axon Town and Uxbridge and the Cop Fosters to Arnest Grove because of a lack of drivers. Keeping it moving, next updates in 15 minutes. This is LBC London. Think you're a safe driver? Next week on LBC, we'll challenge your perceptions about how you drive to help make Britain's roads safer, thanks to Aviva. From road rage to handling winter conditions, so many factors can affect your skills behind the wheel. Listen all next week for the LBC special report on driving. Take the challenge and download the Aviva Drive app now, where safer drivers could save money on comprehensive car insurance from Aviva.